the abdominal pelvic cavity. Remember from our previous talk, we have the thoracic cavity, and then we have the abdominal pelvic cavity, which consists of the abdomen and the pelvic area. Well, this cavity can be divided up into two different methods. The first method, which every student hopes they get tested on, and every professor doesn't test on because they test on the other one. Don't skip it, you probably will get test questions on it. The first one is divided into four sections. We have a right upper quadrant, a right lower quadrant, a left upper quadrant, and a left lower quadrant. Let me address something as a study tip right now. When you see a right something, there is a really good possibility that there is a left something. When you see an upper something, there is a really good chance you have a lower something. So let's take a look at this section again and you'll realize you only have two things to memorize. You have an upper quadrant and a lower quadrant. Is it a left side or a right side? Boom, you're done. The next one starts to make students very unhappy. But before I show it to you, don't freak out. It will freak you out when you see it, but I will explain it and we will cut the amount you have to study in half. So here is the graphic. As you can see, there are nine sections. It's a tic-tac-toe board. We have a right hypochondriac region, an epigastric region, a left hypochondriac region, a right lumbar region, an umbilical region, a left lumbar region, a right iliac region, a hypogastric region, and a left iliac region. Like I said, freak out! But let's break this down. We have a left, we have to have a right. So that eliminates the stuff on the left side and the right side that are separate. All you have to do is just memorize one set of either the left or right and you're good. What I mean by that is take a look at the graphic again. We have a hypochondriac region. We have a left and a right side. We have the lumbar region. We have a left and a right side. We have the iliac region. We have a left and a right side. The hypochondriac region. If somebody said that, oh, Sally over there is a hypochondriac, they mean that she's always complaining about being sick or having medical issues or something like that, okay? They're always going, oh, uh, uh, look where my hand is, uh, hypochondriac, uh, hypochondriac, hypochondriac region right here, hypochondriac. <gasps> Hey, wait a minute, is he just being goofy? No, he's referencing the part of the body. It's the hypochondriac region. Oh, we have a left. Oh, we have a right. Do it at home, hypochondriac, left. Oh, right. Oh. Now, if you're doing this in a library or a coffee place and you have headphones on and you're doing this, I might warn you right now, people will look at you weird, but hey, don't worry about them. You take care of yourself. Moving on, hypochondriac, hypochondriac in your office at your home. Do you have a chair with lumbar support? If you don't, you really should because lumbar support is important because lumbar are the lower part of your back. It's important to have lumbar support for your lower back. Lumbar support. Hey, wait a minute. He's not just being goofy. He's referencing a part of the body, the lumbar area. So we have a hypochondriac. We have a lumbar area and we have the hips, the iliac region. So hypochondriac, lumbar, iliac. We have a left and we have a right. Life just got a lot easier, didn't it? I hope so. Now moving down the middle. Also very, very easy. Let's begin by talking about the belly button. The belly button is otherwise known as the umbilicus, right? The umbilical cord. Every parent knows that this is the umbilical cord. Well, that area is called the umbilical region, right where the belly button sits, the umbilical region. Going above that is epi, going below that is hypo. Epi means above or upon, hypo means below or under. Epi, above or upon, hypo, under, below. Epigastric, hypogastric epigastric, 
hypogastric. We just cut your study time down by half. Important, do this as much as you can. When I was going through anatomy and physiology, I did not have a professor doing goofy noises, making goofy things to help us remember, nor did I have them break this down. I try my best throughout all these videos, which by the way, Lesson 1 is free, and if you like Lesson 1, please continue to buy the Lesson lessons so I can afford to feed my children. All kidding aside, buy the lessons. Ah, but seriously, if you do like them, please pass this on. This is how I'm able to make more videos. Okay, end of the endorsement, back to what I'm talking about. The reason why you have to look for these is because, and professors have been getting better about this, your professor might not break this stuff down into more bite-sized chunks. You need to try to figure commonalities. You need to find uh, mnemonics, ways to memorize things to help you get this stuff down for the exam as well as help you memorize it for life. So once again, the nine areas, we have the uh, hypochondriac, the lumbar, the iliac, lefts and rights. Down the middle, we have an epi above our pond gastric, a hypo under or below gastric, and an umbilical region. This is going to conclude lesson one. Congratulations, you are on your way to mastering human anatomy and physiology. Please be sure to check out the website, mrfortsclass.net, for further lessons and further updates. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, we post quizzes uh, every other day or so. We also post more information. I am always available for questions, comments, or concerns. I realize that my website is very popular, but I also know there's problems with it, and I want student feedback. So please feel free to email me any ideas, any comments, and again, if you have concerns or if you run into problems, let me know. Mr. Ford at mrfordsclass.com. I wish you the best in your studies and good luck in your study of human anatomy and physiology. It is challenging, but so cool. Until lesson two, see you later.